Morning. So with this video today, I want to introduce you to the Bio321 Total Science Experience Lab. And um, this was an invention of our biology department um, a couple decades ago, actually, when we were piloting it. And we've developed it into this unique capstone experience where you become scientists for the semester. So by way of introduction, I want to uh, give you this little presentation and we'll talk about exactly what the biology capstone experience is all about. Okay, so the Total Science Experience Lab. Now, you've probably had many laboratories up to this point, and many of them involved reading careful instructions, following those instructions, and at the end of the day, you turn in a lab report and go home, and perhaps your expression looks sort of like this. Now, the Bio321 approach is a little bit different. What we do is we say that the best way to really understand research is to jump straight in to the deep end of the pool and do real research. But fear not, we're going to have a tremendous support system for you along the way. We're going to train you in how to actually do this without drowning. And in the end of the semester, there will be happiness after all, and you're countenance will look a lot like this. Well, maybe not, but at any rate, I think you'll have a good time if you really get into this class. So our lab philosophy I just want to talk about for a minute is that biological research can be best understood by actually doing it. This is, if you want to call it, the Nike philosophy, right? The just do it philosophy. And in fact, when you're learning any complex task, the best way to actually go about it is to get out there and do it. There's a time to study the process, which you've probably been doing a lot of up to this point in your lab exercises, but then there's a time to actually play the game. In other words, you can map things out, you can learn about the process uh, through books, through even some small exercises, but until you actually get in there and play the game, in this case, doing research, you don't really find out what research is about. The second thing we say is that research involves a lot of skills that normally aren't taught in traditional laboratories. So even though you've been learning, for example, how to write and how to carry out certain procedures in the lab, there are a lot of skills that you're going to learn in the process of doing this course that will go way beyond what you've already learned. And that's an important part of becoming a researcher or at least evaluating whether you might want to do research at some point in the future. Now we have an overarching theme in this lab of ecology, evolution, environmental biology studies, and we feel it's an ideal forum for introducing this total research experience because very often the kinds of analyses and so forth that are required and the kinds of questions you can ask with relatively few supplies and so forth are actually interesting questions. So you don't have to become a four-year PhD to do really interesting research in these areas of research. The other thing we want to give you the impression of is that you are much more capable of sophisticated scientific thinking than you think you are. Um, so we're going to play the Wizard of Oz here, basically, and, and show you through this exercise that you have a scientific, research-capable brain. So you're going to learn how to do these kinds of things during this course. Number one, decide on an important research question. Now this is actually fundamental to doing research, is figuring out what to ask. And that involves doing background research in the library, for example. Then you're going to actually design an experiment that's going to answer a question. The question that you already discovered was an important one. You're going to sell the research that, you're designed, that you've designed to your peers and a funding agency by writing a proposal. Now this is exactly what happens with actual scientists. They come up with an idea, they formulate it into a proposal, and they try to sell that proposal to a funding agency so that they can get money to carry out their research. And the whole idea is that they will be subject to peer review, which is objective, and we're going to actually train you in that process as well, because to understand how rigorously research 
is reviewed, you need to actually do that kind of review yourself. Once your project gets approved, and it may take two or three rounds of proposal rewriting to get it reviewed, and by the way, that's not out of the ordinary at all, um, you will carry out your approved experiment. This is your study. This is your unique study. It's not been done before. We don't know what the answers are going to be. You will perform and interpret basic statistics, which we will teach you how to do, so you need not fear there if you haven't had any statistics at all. You're going to write up your results as a manuscript for publication. So instead of doing a lab report of any kind, you're going to actually write this up as a manuscript. So we're going to teach you in this course what are the components of a manuscript and how do we write those up. Finally, the very last thing uh, as part of any scientific process is to create and display a poster for a scientific symposium. Some of you may even be chosen if you're done a really good job and you're exciting outgoing personalities, you may get chosen to give an oral presentation in that symposium. So it's a very exciting chance to actually become a scientist. In the process, we think you'll learn a number of life skills, or at least you'll get practice at them. First of all, create critical and original thinking. When you come up with your question, and when you actually peer review other people's proposals, you will hone your critical and original thinking skills. As you develop your proposal, you're going to also be involved in learning how to persuade others who are looking at your work objectively uh, that your work is worth funding. You're going to be sharing ideas. Now, throughout this process, you're going to be working in a group, usually a group of three, sometimes a group of four, in which you will be sharing ideas and you'll be coming to consensus, and that's a very important part of how science works. You'll also be sharing what your findings in the end of this. You're going to be working with other people and coordinating schedules, coordinating meetings outside of class to get assignments done that are group assignments and so forth. Also very important in any field, right? Oral communication is important in lots and lots of fields, and you're going to find it's critical in terms of doing well in this course. Written communication is also very important, obviously, in lots of fields, and you're going to get lots of practice of that, both in the proposal writing phase, where you're doing a group writing project, and then in the manuscript writing phase, when you're doing an individual manuscript on your findings. So you're going to get lots of practice, you're going to get edited, and you're going to respond to that editing with improved writing. By the end of this course, we hope you'll understand the process of scientific publication. So, as we said, you, we want you to know that you are capable of uncovering new knowledge and contributing to a field in a way that's not been done before. And that's part of the discovery we want to go on in this course, is discovery about yourself and your capabilities. You're also going to learn the nature of research, and there are positives and negatives to this. And you can't really know these things without experiencing them, but research, and I'll just tell you these, but you, again, you won't internalize what it really means until you experience it. But research is time-consuming. This is a time-consuming course. It's rewarding. I think you'll find when you start doing statistics and getting results and answering your questions, you're going to find it really interesting. It's frustrating because things will happen that are out of your control and you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to figure a way around those problems. It's fulfilling because you actually are able to answer a question. You're able to present your results in a coherent kind of fashion. And you're kind of closing a story. You're, you're completing the loop of asking the question. You're coming up with an answer that is scientifically based. It's certainly intellectually challenging to, to try to even figure out what a good question to ask is, is not a trivial exercise. And then throughout the whole process, making decisions, for example, about sample size and how you're going to set up your experiment, and then how you're going to write up your results and present your results. All of those are intellectual challenges that we think you're ready for at this point in your career. And I hope you find this whole process is stimulating. There's a lot of creativity involved in research. So if you're at all a creative person, you can get a lot of um, satisfaction about uh, from this process of doing research. The other thing I hope you're going to discover is that scientists don't very often operate in isolation. Not only will you be working with your fellow triad members, but 
you might have to reach out to other scientists for help, experts in the field, and utilize their expertise to advise you on your projects. We've had a number of different scholars across WVU and actually beyond WVU that have helped our students in the past. And so you should think about that as you're developing your questions and so forth. Um, you don't have to do this in isolation. You can get advice. And in fact, scientists are wonderfully willing to give advice to others. It's an amazing thing about the scientific culture that we are very uh, giving kind of culture in a sense. We don't keep good ideas to ourselves. We basically put them out there for the greater good. And we're more than happy to help eager students uh, answer interesting questions. Now there's some keys to success I want to give you right from the outset. Um, I often have these silly acronyms with my um, suggestions for success or, or kind of uh, of tips. And so the, the acronym is TIPSY here. Teamwork. Teamwork is really, really important. Um, teamwork is uh, a, a key element of doing good science these days. Most science, if you look at journals, is done in teams. And in fact, it's done by people contributing their expertise to the overall problem solving. And um, so good teamwork is absolutely key. And Honestly, um, working on that skill, good teamwork, can help you in many, many fields of life, not just in research. I'll also say a real key to success in this course is involvement. Um, if you sit by passively and let your, your lab partners um, take most of the load, you are not going to get out of this course what you should. And um, you will also <laughs> suffer in terms of your grade because a lot of your grade comes from qualitative assessments by your TA about how much you're participating and being involved. But, but honestly, if you simply want to um, get the most out of this course, I suggest being really involved in your project. Persevering through problems is absolutely critical to success in research. Uh, every research project encounters some kind of problem. None goes perfectly smoothly. So expect that and then find a way around your problems, find solutions to your problems and persevere don't get flummoxed by them. And lastly, creativity, as I said, creativity is key to being a successful scientist. And I think when you formulate a, a good question, what often is involved in making it really good is that it's, it's an insight that someone hasn't had before. And you might say, well, I don't know much about environmental biology. How can I be creative in this field? It doesn't take a whole lot of reading in it to engage your brain into coming up with a question that no one has thought about before. So, so try to do that. Try really hard to use your creativity, come up with an interesting question. It may not even be involving the question, maybe about some measurement you make on your organism that's very creative. And that's what we're looking for in this course, is sort of sparks of, of creativity in the way you think about things. All right, so another key to success is having fun while working hard in this course. You know, I think scientists as a group generally enjoy what they're doing because there are a lot easier ways to make a living um, and you could get a lot higher salaries doing other things. But doing science is fun and um, it involves hard work, but uh, those two things often go hand in hand. All right, well then, this is that. Welcome to the course. I'm in the upper left corner there. Dr. Peter John is in the upper right corner. Dr. Hawkins is right here. And uh, Dr. DeFazio may also be kind of listening into the genomic sections of this course. Dr. Hawkins is in charge of the uh, genomics, genomic sections this semester. And um, as her right-hand people, Jasmine Freeman and Danushia Ramachandran uh, in the lower right here will be um, the TAs for those two sections. And then the other folks here, Zach Fowler, Mark Burnham, Chris Walter, Leanne Schultz, Amy Hruska, and Jennifer Chandler are our star TAs in this course. And by the way, um, we have chosen, shh, don't tell anybody, but we've chosen the very best TAs for this course because it's a challenging course to teach. And so you are going to really enjoy working with these TAs this semester. All right, I think that's it um, from the uh, uh, lands of Montana. You can see behind me there's a bison. And uh, I am recording this from 
Big Sky, Montana in December 2013. Enjoy.